All right, so this has to be one of the most important topics in beekeeping, and that is you need to treat for mites. You need to treat for mites. Um, for people who don't want to use chemicals per se, and, and yeah, I mean, everything has a chemical compound to it. More to the point, people who are not wanting to use artificial chemicals for treating your bees, there are a couple of options. There's formic acid, there's uh, oxalic acid, but using those properly and at the right times of the year is so, so crucial. Let's deal with the chemical side of it. Something that I highly recommend, and uh, I wish I was getting kickbacks from these people because I talk about it a lot. But uh, on the chemical side, one of the most consistent treatments that we have for mites is Apivar, which the active ingredient is Amitraz. Uh, once again, that's Apivar, A-P-I, V is in Victor, A is in Alpha, R is in Romeo, Apivar. The times to treat with Apivar ideally is in the spring which uh, as soon as your bees are starting to get active in our area washington state that would be end of march beginning of april maybe even mid-march uh, as soon as temperatures are starting to get mild your bees are starting to brood up uh, it's really really good to uh, hit them with apovar the second time which is incredibly important. Once again, this is to our region. We're in Western Washington, uh, just south of Olympia, Washington. The second time we treat, and this is a really crucial time as well, is end of July, beginning of August. I don't care if there's a honey flow going on. I don't care if, I mean, it hurts a bit to sacrifice that little bit more of honey that the bees could bring in. But I'd much rather pull the supers, and that's what we do. We pull any honey supers the last week of July, and we get that mite treatment on end of July, beginning of August at the absolute latest. So we do that. Uh, the reason that's important is that your bees are, you know, during the summer, they're building up to the largest population, which also means that they have the lar or that the mites have the largest uh, amount of hosts to reproduce. And so Randy Oliver, scientificbeekeeping.com has some graphs showing just how mites increase. Uh, check out his website, incredible articles. But uh, you wanna, the reason that's so important to knock those mites down is we've got around 34, 35 different viral infections that the mites carry. And so if you're waiting until the end of August or into September before you treat, you might be going into winter with low mite counts, but that extra time between August, September, allows the viral issues to get established in the bees and your bees are gonna collapse. So uh, treat in our area, end of July, beginning of August at the absolute latest. And then um, do your treatment then, do a mite count, which we'll do another video on that. And if the mite level's still up there, treat again. Uh, so we're up to two treatments, spring, late summer. And then this is where oxalic acid comes in really handy. In our area, we treat our bees the end of November, beginning of December with oxalic acid twice, about five to six days apart. And the reason we wait until that time of the year is because the bees are mostly broodless and oxalic acid vapor or even the dribble method works best when the mites are exposed because oxalic acid when it's vaporized does not permeate or go through wax or the cappings uh, and oxalic acid stays active the crystals from vaporizing it stays active around maybe 48 hours so after a couple of days um, you're kill off of mites from that oxalic acid vaporization drops off like a cliff. And so that's where uh, I've had several people tell me that they treated with oxalic acid late in the year, like September, October, which as we just discussed, that, that you're already saying your bees up for failure because the viral issues have become established. 
But then if you're doing a treatment of like, say an oxalic acid treatment once every five to seven days, there's a lot of holes in that treatment regimen where there's gonna be a lot of mites that are not knocked down. So once again, to recap, and that's all we'll do for this video is, um, well, actually one more thing after this. So to recap, if you're using Apovar, spring treatment, as soon as the bees are starting to get active, starting to brood up, uh, first signs of pollen, maybe dandelions, whatever else, hit them, get that mite count knocked down. And then late summer, you want to hit them again, and then oxalic acid, this is our regimen, oxalic acid, uh, end of November, beginning of December. Our treatment regimen for our area, key thing there. Um, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine who relies solely on oxalic acid, and I'm not recommending you do this, I'm just telling you what he does, because he uses oxalic acid uh, as his only treatment method. What he told me is wor was working for him was to do one treatment of oxalic acid every three days, eight to 10 times. Taking into account the science that after about 48 hours, after you vaporized a high of the oxalic acid crystals have uh, degenerated enough that you really are not gonna get good Varroa kill. It makes sense that if you're doing a treatment every three days over or eight to 10 times every three days, you're gonna cover uh, an entire brood cycle. So you're gonna be able to keep those oxalic acid crystals strong enough uh, in the hive to get a good consistent kill. Once again, I would recommend that if you do try that, that you do the same thing, spring, late summer, and then just do a couple of treatments, because once again, there's no brood in our area, end of November, beginning of December, or very little. And so you can do a couple of treatments, say five days apart, and, and that works. Uh, anyway, so yeah, no, once again, my treatment, that has to be 90%, if not more, of what's going to set you up for the greatest uh, probability of success and your bees looking good. Mites, 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 you have to treat for mites. And uh, if you need clarification or questions in regards to that, feel free to answer or ask rather. And uh, if there's enough uh, questions around that, I'll uh, make a video. Hopefully this is helpful to you, but uh, I really, I can't underline this enough. Mites, mites, mites. Uh, most of the issues that people deal with, with their bees, as far as health and everything else, are secondary or, or, or are byproducts of viral issues that have compromised the colony's health. Uh, people who call me about, you know, wasps killed their hive or, um, uh, or, you know, weird stuff like that. Almost always that's a secondary cause from their bees health being compromised because there is varroa mite issues and the, the viral issues that the mites carried have compromised the colony's health and allowed secondary things. Same thing with small hive beetles. Uh, if you have healthy colonies, small hive beetles aren't gonna be an issue for you. Uh, anyways, so hopefully this is helpful to you and we'll uh, continue to keep these uh, beekeeping 101 videos uh, going for you. And once again, let me know what's being helpful to you so we can continue to help you Thank you again for your time and your business if you're buying nukes from us. And we'll catch you a little later. Bye-bye.